Experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 180 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. Yeah. We've got so much coming up. It is Tuesday, March the 1st, 2011, and lots coming up tonight on the show. We are going to be learning to recover our computer uh, from a bare metal backup, All which right. we were talking about last week. Um, so that's going to be very, very cool. We were um, hey? We were cloning with Zilla. No, we were... We actually had a working disc. We did. With no cracks and or anything. I didn't anything. break it this time. Fantastic. I kept it away yeah. from him. <laughs> uh, we've got a new way for you to watch Category 5 TV on your mobile device, uh, so make sure you stick around. We're going to be telling you all about that and how you can get access to our new mobile, mobile website, which uh, can be set up as if it were an app on many different very devices, nice. so very, very cool stuff. Excited about that. Also, this week is your last week to qualify to win Wirecast 4 which is the spectacular software that we use here at Category 5 TV to broadcast our show and provide uh, all different features such as chroma key, for example. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. There's been some construction around here. Yeah, right? speaking of yeah. chroma key, powered by Wirecast 4, uh, of course, welcome to the, uh, the new 2,000 square foot studio that we have here <laughs> at Category 5 TV. It's, it's nice to have you here. We've got a lot more space to walk around. Uh, and lots more, uh, lots more room to. It's know. a little cooler and a little breezier. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. comfortable. It's nice. yeah. yeah, it's really, really quite cozy. Uh, we've got people bringing us uh, d different sandwiches and things <laughs> backstage just before the show. We've got bonbons and everything. We've got bonbons. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got cough drops, and uh, I've got a water. No brown. How come spirits? you don't have a water? Oh. I told you I'd be early, and, and you know what? <laughs> and you know what? There is a term for almost late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's called on time. <laughs> <laughs> on time to go live. Yes. On time to go live with the new chroma key studio. Hello out there. Can you Robbie's hear me? I didn't like make it. sound check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you miss me, buddy? Oh, I missed you. <laughs> Missed you. We're going to have lots and lots of fun tonight. Uh, in addition, you see that we've got here on the uh, new studio desk here, Pogo Plug Pro. Oh. I do indeed have two of these to give away. So stick around. Uh, your chance to win one of those, you've got to be in our chat room, Category5.tv or Category5 on Freenode. And uh, okay. if you're a part of our chat room, you're going to qualify to uh, to win that awesome prize. And we're going to be talking more about what the Pogo Plug, <coughs> pardon me, what the Pogo Plug is, what the Pogo Plug does uh, in just a few minutes' time. On our website, Category5.tv, we've actually got a poll right there on our site. Uh, if you scroll down the website a little ways, oh, I'm not on the. Uh, oh yeah, I am. Okay, there we go. What is your favorite was, segment? No of Category 5 TV. I'd love to have you vote there. 21 people have voted so far and uh, the verdict is that the favorite segment so far is pre-planned tutorials. Ah. Runner-up is viewer question and answer time followed by fun bits and banter and the Category 5 TV newsroom. Get your uh, say on our poll Category5.tv. We would love to have you go there and uh, let us know what your favorite part of Category 5 Technology TV is. Nobody voted for Christie's Weather? It's not, it's not even an option <laughs> uh, under other. Was that last week or the week before? No, it was last Co week. Last week she was here in the started, studio, yeah. Yeah, we had some fun with that. Yeah, oh, lots of fun with Christie. Always fun with Christy. Uh, Becca is uh, over in the newsroom right now. Becca, I'll let you uh, tell us what's coming up in the news. Coming up in the newsroom. A complete microcomputer that fits in your eye could be the medical device of the future. MotorStorm Apocalypse will not be released in New Zealand, at least for now. New research indicates mobile phone radiation does indeed affect the brain. Zelda turned 25 years old last week. A Canadian space pioneer aims to prove we're not alone in the universe and she has the technology to do it. Stick around for the latest news from the Category 5 TV newsroom. Thanks, Becca. Sorry, what was that? 
Hey, oh, no, no, I, I'm good. I was just wondering uh, where we were going from here. Oh, okay, indeed. Uh, lots coming up tonight, so stick around, get into our chat room. That's your chance to, uh, to participate in the, uh, in the contest for the Pogo Plug uh, tonight. Cool. All right. We've got some new members we should say hello to. Hey. These are our latest members, and uh, a good welcome to all of you. Uh, we got Ditiche. I may be pronouncing these incorrectly. Robbie can have a stab at them after. We have Jay Lee, and we have Smitty Smith from Westland, and Stevie Feelgood is in the chat room. Um, CSQRD. I having trouble pronouncing that one. I want a vowel. Um, Key Serge from Winston Salem, USA. N2 JMB. FIHA, Grey Bear D2025, Anthony Fear, Severian, and Ant Man 1380. So, a great big welcome to all of you out there. Cheers, nice to have you here. You can join us on our website. It's it's free to sign up, and uh, you can go on to Category 5.tv, uh, register for your free viewer account, and actually you'll get a, a bonus hundred points right now, just uh. for signing up. You're going to get those Category 5 viewer points. And I'll just uh, give you a little hint if you want to get stocked up on those points because they are going to be redeemable for prizes as the year goes on. Uh, they're going to be redeemable for coupons and software and uh, hardware ballots and things like that. So you want to have as many uh, points as you possibly can. If you are a registered viewer on our website and you haven't already done so, make sure that you also uh, fill in your profile information. That's going to be your next step to uh, redeeming uh, as many points as you possibly can right off the bat. Uh, and this is kind of a limited time thing because of the fact that um, the viewer point system is uh, fairly new. We're giving everybody a good chance to get a whole ton of points uh, added to their account. So you get a point every time you log in? Every day that you log in. Every day that you log in. So, so I can't just log in and out. You can't just log out spend and my log back in. Uh, eating bonbons, logging on and off. And but if you log in seven times a week, seven days, then you get seven points. Got it. So <laughs> it, it, it adds up. It actually adds up. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, we'll uh, we'll head on over to uh, to the email box and uh, okay, see what's well, going on there. If you have questions for us, it's live at category five dot tv. Uh, but indeed, the best way to get us during the live show is uh, to join us in our chat room, which you'll find on our website category five dot tv, and it's of course category five on the Freenode IRC uh, server. So there. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have uh, one from uh, Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. And his uh, system is Mint Darien. I'm thinking Debian. Debian, but, sure. But, okay, we'll go with that. I cannot play the original DVD movie copy on Debian Lenny 5.02 AMD. Oh, this is a heck of a long little description here. And Mint Debian. Did you want me to go through the sure. whole? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I cannot We're play the original whatever. DVD movie copy on Debian Lenny 5.02 AMD 64 2.6.30 oh, yeah. BPO. Okay, so You're Debian. Sure? Okay. We've so got Debian, we've got uh, Mint, Mint, Mint based Debian. on Ubuntu. My DVD model is a uh, Matshita uh, DVD RAM UJ8525. But under Windows XP and Vista, it's working fine. I tried all the solutions from Google. No win none is working. Uh, do you have any solution for this DVD drive under Linux Debian or Mint Debian? Uh, I am a Linux fan. I really like to play DVD under Linux. Thanks in advance. Here's the error I got when I tried to play the DVD by VLC. Um, so summarizing I may not read all of that. Error cracking CSS key for video TS. So That's right. Generally, that error is going to be telling us it's uh, you've got libdvd read installed. Everything's good there. Um, judging by the error output here, it's the error is error cracking CSS key, which most likely is going to mean that you're um, you're using a, a region specific disk on a drive that is hard hard set in the firmware to a specific okay. region. Um, good thing to try. Most DVD. Uh, Readers on your computer are going to be—they're going to have a firmware update that will allow you to remove that restriction. Um, whether or not in your country that's legal uh, is is possibly another story. 
the region specific um, system is, is basically in place so that people in America can't watch DVDs from the UK. In our world, that becomes a big problem. Oh, because we've I, got PAL and NT. Well, though it's not it's not the oh. format. It's the it's an actual restriction that they put on it, almost like a DRM oh, kind okay. of thing, so that you can't buy DVDs from overseas and watch them here, which can be a problem because things like there's uh, we we order a lot of DVDs from BBC.co.uk because we enjoy UK broadcasting from BBC, uh, but those DVDs are all region coded for the UK. So of course we get those and, and our only option is, one, either use a, a DVD drive that has been firmware updated to remove that restriction so that it's not region one anymore, it's region zero, which is open to everything, uh, or to, uh, to rip those discs to files uh, and then use the files to watch. So, so it's, it, it's kind of a weird thing that this is still yeah. in place because, to be honest with you, with the internet and the ability to order from anywhere in the world, it just seems... I don't know who they're stopping from sharing discs other than people who want to order from overseas. So check around, see if your, your uh, drive has a firmware update to set it to region zero. Um, hopefully some, some Google searching or something would, uh, would help you with that. Um, I'm going to just quickly look this up. Machida DVD RAM UJ852S. Locked region four. Um, so there are different posts, and you'll find some stuff if you do a, a search for it. <coughs> Not Pardon sure me. what region. I don't think it says what, uh, whatever region that the optical drive is locked to. You can only change it so many times, and then it's oh. it's basically a dead drive. Um, so you want to set it to region zero, and then you don't have to keep, and then you don't have to worry about it. It will work with any disk. Um, so you'll have to, you'll really have to do some some digging uh, on that. It's a it's an awfully old optical drive. Um, if it's a five and a quarter drive and you can't get it working, I would just suggest replacing it with something that's that can be that's known to be able to set uh, region free. Uh, otherwise, you could run into problems like this. Other option is possibly try installing VLC on your computer, uh, a different player that may be able to get around those region specific um, firmwares. Uh, that would be the other option. So did mention using VLC Media Player 0.8.6. VLC. Just want to check if you're on the latest version. 0.8.6. Yes. With the current version 1.1.7. But maybe that's Windows. I think it's different for. Let's just double check. Make sure that. We've got the yeah. It's one point one point seven is current. So you could try updating your VLC That's to something brand new. Uh, Videoland.org/vlc. Uh, you'll find the uh, software as a free download, and you'll see that on Linux, the current version is one point one point seven. So, not sure where you're getting zero point eight from, but I'm guessing that's really quite old and possibly obsolete. So, you might want to try updating your VLC first and foremost and then uh, get into looking at your firmware, see if you can set it to region zero. So it seems to work on XP or Vista, it's just on uh, yep. Mint or... Uh, well, there's different, there's different drivers that you'll install on so. Windows and things that, that will get around those issues. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll change the region yourself in Windows or it just the software allows for that. But uh, in Linux, you're, it's a little bit different just the way it works, right? The way the drivers work? Something to check if you do get some weird errors, though. Sure. Let's see what reason you're set. All right. We have another question. I hope that helps. Let us know, okay? Can't hurt. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what can hurt. <laughs> hey, hey. He struck me. Oh, okay. This is from Invincible Mutant. Hey, Invincible Mutant. Hi, Robbie and friends. You're stretching that friends thing here. Oh, um, hi. I am in Manchester. Due to the time zone difference, I can't follow your program live most of the time. However, I can't afford to miss any of them in the future. Therefore, I like it to is, ask... It, it is, I'll just add, it is very expensive to miss an episode of Category 5. <laughs> what did that cost you? I'm just playing on your words. Okay. It's all good. Therefore, I like <laughs> to ask if you have a mechanism to allow your fans, like me, to follow you by email. 
such as newsletter email including the link to the video and summary. I would appreciate if I could be informed when the recorded episodes are ready to watch. Oh, I see. Another cool link to share with the community. HTTP colon slash slash www.webupd8.org. Going with a little bit of leet speak there with webupdate.org. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the site, but <laughs> there you go. It's been dropped and it will be in the show notes. Uh, okay. Okay. That's kind of an interesting request to get an email. Now, I'll just tell you there, Invincible Mutant, what you could always do is get an RSS feed aggregator, which is going to automatically get the latest version of Category 5 TV every single week as soon as it's released. Your computer's going to download the file in the best possible quality uh, format, get the H.264 version, and you're going to get um, a really, really nice video. So that's one thing you can do is with the aggregator. As far as getting a notification by email, um, there's nothing in place for us to do that. Um, if you'd like, if the aggregator thing is not going to work for you, um, then uh, pop me an email and just say, yeah, you know what, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to receive an email once a week after you post it with a link to the website itself. Of course, we post it on Twitter, um, that kind of thing. But uh, as far as getting an email, we don't have anything in place. But I'd be happy to make something. Um, I'm, I'm all about... Another project. Ah, I, yeah. I've created all these systems that interact with the database so that it's all automatic. So when I update, <coughs> pardon me, I update the database, all of the RSS feeds get spewed out. Our new uh, mobile uh, website gets automatically updated. Everything is all automatic. Um, so, so maybe just a quick email to everyone when it's so we could have it set up. Hey, if gang, if you really ready. want that, and if there are other people who are interested in that, pop me an email live at category five TV, and I'll put you uh, on the list. Uh, we could certainly give that a go, and you can tell me exactly what you would like yeah. to receive. Be it just a, a note that says, "Hey, here's the episode information," and uh, you know, click here to uh, to get uh, to watch the show. You could just launch right right from your email. That's always possible. Cool thought. <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. I'm just uh, reading something from. Uh, Are they making fun of the chroma key? Ubuntu. Yes. Um. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm tempted to throw a ball or something, just to see where it goes. But uh. okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's just, it's okay. just the abyss. The abyss. It, the abyss is beyond us. It's all good. <laughs> wow. Okay. That kind of hurt when I lost my arm there, actually. <laughs> Okay. That's painful. Are we having fun yet? Okay, look at what we've got. We have... <laughs> I've got my iPod Touch here. Now, you checked it out I did. on your BlackBerry. Now, what, what was going on? Actually, you know what? I think it's when I decided to fast forward to see what was going on in the middle of the show. Oh! Um, and then I, I was, was saying, having like, trouble it syncing it looked, at that it point. It looks great. I've yeah. turned off the wireless here so I don't get a phone call in the sure. middle of the show. Thank you. Um, but um, it looked great. You know, um, except I've got these. I'm at an awkward age where you know it's this or this. I'm not sure, but um, it looked great and the sound sounded great. Okay. But uh, after I sort of fast forwarded, you know, right, right, scrolled into the middle of That's the show, On it seemed like some of the the audio was maybe a little out of sync with the video. Really? I don't know if that's inherent to the the way the black the black it up. Or? Now on the iPod Touch, I've been able to skip to any point in the video without any trouble at all. I'll just show you. Now, we have a video here that was submitted by S. Hamill Smith. Uh, let's pull that up here. There we are. There is our new app. Well, it's, I call it an app. You can go to mobile.cat5.tv. And thank you again to S. Hamill Smith for submitting this video of, uh, of him working this on an iPod Touch. You see as soon as you hit play. So the, the app actually gives you access to the latest version of uh, the latest episode of the show, as you saw there, and now he's clicking on it. Now, we did find people have reported that it's a little bit slower to load the video on an iPod or iPhone. Oh. But once it's playing, you can skip through, and there's, there's no problem there. I'll tell you what devices have been reported to work. Uh, we have S. Hamill Smith has reported that the iPod Touch works great. Uh, the iPad uh, was tested by Tanner64 on Twitter, uh, as well as Popey. 
Uh, and then we've got the, iPod, uh, the iPhone 4. Uh, was tested by Cubs Fanatic 86, the Galaxy S by uh, S. Hamilsmith as well. Uh, Noel tested it on the HTC Desire. Oh. Uh, Michael Hillpot told us that it works fantastically on the Nexus One. Uh, Melenthus uh, reported that on the uh, third generation iPhone, uh, it's also working just fantastically. And as Eric has reported here tonight, the uh, Blackberry is also able to access this service oh, yeah, it's, without it's, any trouble. Um. Yeah, so this list great. here that you're seeing on the screen is actually, um, uh, that was actually a list of the episodes, and now he's zoomed in on a particular episode just by clicking on it, and then it gives you the option of actually accessing that episode's information, and then, of course, watching the episode directly on your device. So pretty cool stuff. It's mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E, dot cat5 dot TV. If you have a device um, with iOS, pardon me, which unfortunately is the only device that I have to test with, you can click on Add to Home Screen uh, in, in uh, Safari, and you'll be able to actually click that as if it was an app. And I'm sure other, uh, other platforms have something similar to that, being able to add it to your desktop or dashboard. Um, and then when you launch it, it's actually being launched just like an app. Um, and actually, that's how... Um, as Hamill Smith here set that up. You see, he's actually got it right there. See that? There you go. Very nice. So it's very cool stuff. Not the typical way to do an app because we, we get around the need for the app store or anything like that. Uh, works great. So Noel, the person you were speaking of, sure. uh, he's using the that HTC on an Android, Android, is it? Yes. Right, okay. So And it actually loads very, very quickly on the Android devices. Nice. Much quicker than the iPod. Touch. Yeah, a couple of the folks in the uh, chat room were wondering about the droids. Yeah, definitely. And, but yeah, the desire is. And if you have a device and you're trying it out, and I didn't name your device there, uh, please pop me an email uh, live at category5.tv or tweet me at uh, twitter.com slash Robbie Ferguson and just let me know what device you're using and what the experience is like. Uh, also, we're going to be producing a uh, commercial for the, uh, for the uh, system. And I'd love it if you would uh, do just like uh, as Hamill Smith did there and just record a little video of you using your device. And if you want to be actually in the video, too, that's cool. Uh, they decided just to zoom in on the device yeah. itself. But uh, Actually, somebody in the chat room may as well. Uh, how uh, big a chunk of bandwidth is it going to take up when you do it? Like, you want to have if, a data plan. If somebody's plan. got 500 mega yeah. a month or something like that. You don't really, do you? Really? Would you honestly have that low of of restriction what do you got on here yeah yeah that's probably all i'm really using use wi-fi if that's the case okay get on your wi-fi um because this is uh like the with the ipod touches and things like it's a it's a high quality screen it's it's basically next to hd video on a little tiny screen uh, you're going to be looking at probably around 200 megabytes per episode that's for the oh, entire wow. hour so of course you can click on it and it's and it's not going to stream that whole 200 megabytes to you right away, but if you watch the whole thing right through... That's a pile if you've only got 500 If you only have 500 megs, yeah. you might want to think twice, but uh, that would be the case for anything. I wouldn't even go on YouTube or anything if that was the limit that I had, because you're looking, okay. you know, for a few minutes of video, you'd be using that up. But uh, I would hope that people would have better, like, higher data plans than that. That's one thing that I do like about the iPod Touch is strictly Wi-Fi. I don't risk right. accidentally going over bandwidth because it's strictly off of my home Wi-Fi or wherever I am. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I'll, I'll report back. Yeah, I'll and let you know uh, if and I went over last night. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing me the bill. I'm gonna I get will. a whole bunch of bills in the mail, aren't I? So it's expensive when you miss the show and expensive when you don't miss the show. <laughs> when you catch it on your uh, on your device yeah. through a 500 megabyte data so, plan. Yes, you, you can't afford not to watch it at all. <laughs> Dearest Robbie, I tried your new mobile.category5 or cat5.tv. You owe me $800. And I decided that I would catch up on all the videos that I've missed since episode one. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Way to break the bank. There you go. Okay. Um, so do pop me an email. Let me know how it works on your device. We'd love to know, and we're going to be putting together a nice little website for that. In the meantime, when you go to category5.tv, uh, if you are on your uh, mobile device and it's detected as compatible, you'll see a little button uh, right at the top of the page that says launch the mobile version. 
So check that out, category5.tv, or go directly there, mobile.cat5.tv. You know, talking about mobile devices and mm -hmm. mobile devices. <laughs> I never know how to say that one. Well, you know. I, I jump between the two. Normally, these things come, you know, you just uh, set it to U.S. English. Sure. But, okay. you know, being in Canada, we like to spell some words like color with a U in there or, mm. uh, you know. So I thought I would set it for U.K. English. Well, well, that's pretty close. Now, on my Bluetooth device, when I press it, it says, say a command. Oh, yeah? It used to say, say it's a brilliant. command. No, it says, right. say a command. And I say, call Robbie Ferguson. Right out. Mobile. And it says, calling Robbie Ferguson mobile. <laughs> and I can let you hear it after. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'd definitely love to hear that. We'll record it and make it into some kind of yeah. mashup. So sure. there is a difference even on the Bluetooth side of things when you choose U.S. as opposed to <laughs> U.K. Fantastic. There is no Canada. There really? Canadian oh. English? Probably just as well. Hey. <laughs> Out in the boat. <laughs> okay. I'll try to behave Terrible. in the future. Terrible. Okay. We've got a uh, couple of minutes uh, coming up before the news. I don't know if there's any questions coming in the chat room. Well, DOS Bomber, no, I'm not quite sure it's ready a time for the Canadians to uh, join the dark side and start spelling color, C-O-L-O-R. We tried that in print for a while, but uh, I think uh, most publications are spelling it the... Uh, How we digress. The, the proper... Well, I, I was addressing the chat room. <laughs> okay. Thanks, chat room. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for this technology TV program? <laughs> yes. Are you ever going to adopt color with a C-O-L-O-R? I'm not poking fun. I'm just poking fun. Well, Raptor thinks we Canadians should resist. That was Raptor 222. Yeah? Okay. I'll stop. That's what makes us unique, eh? Greg in Texas doesn't really care. Exactly. <laughs> Greg in Texas has uh, a lot of people that are saying exactly. And Jot wants to talk about the weather. <laughs> That's terrible. Seriously, no questions in the chat room? That's a first. We're usually well, just swamped with questions. This is what's neat about our show is if, you're, we, if you're new we, here. Well, we can always talk. Yes, we can talk about the weather. Or we could, we you know, That's talk our format. about <laughs> color <laughs> and neighbor and some other. I'm just saying that if you're new here at Category 5, this is an interactive show. Uh, we do uh, start out every show with a, with a planned topic and where we want to go with the show, um, but we leave it up to our viewers for the first half of the show to submit their questions, and you can get your questions answered by joining us in the chat room at Category5.tv, which you'll want to do tonight in order to win a pogo plug anyways. Uh, but also, if you're watching this after the fact, make sure you uh, pop us an email live at category5.tv. Okay, well, we do have actually what looks like it might be a question, but uh, just we're, uh, as I digress. Out of time for questions at this point. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Heavens. Watch the clock. Here Finally we go. We formulated it. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to hop over to, uh, to Becca in the newsroom, uh, who's got those spectacular stories for us. Becca, take it away. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, how many microcomputers can you fit onto the head of a pin? According to a press release by the University of Michigan, their latest prototype microcomputer is smaller than the tip of a pen and can be impl implanted in the human eye to help cure glaucoma. In a package that's just over one cubic millimeter, the system fits an ultra-low power microprocessor, a presser sensor, memory, a thin film battery, a solar cell and a wireless radio with an antenna that can transmit data to an external reader device that would be held near the eye. In the current third generation Phoenix chip, the researchers have used a new kind of architecture to enable the chip to work with extremely low power consumption. The solar cells in the system need to be exposed to 10 hours of indoor light or one and a half hours of sunlight to make the device work. And incredibly, the storage in the system can handle up to an entire week's worth of information. If things go to plan, a network of such devices will one day track pollution, monitor structural integrity, perform, perform surveillance, or make virtually any object smart and trackable. Mainly targeted towards medical applications, these devices are expected to be commercially available in just a few years. In the wake of the devastating earthquake which hit the city of Christchurch on New Zealand's South Island, 
Sony has confirmed that they are pulling the launch of its upcoming racing game called MotorStorm Apocalypse in New Zealand. The game, which features incredibly realistic gameplay and graphics, features apocalyptic racing through active earthquake areas where buildings fall down all around you. Sony may revisit the game's launch in New Zealand in the future when it's a bit less sensitive. New research indicates mobile phone radiation does indeed affect the brain. A study which was published on Wednesday from the National Institute of Health in the U.S. has shown that although cell phones produce nowhere near as much radiation as they did in the analog days, there is in fact some effect on the human brain due to the radiation. The report also indicates that there could be cause for concern for cell phone addicts. The scans conducted in the study consistently showed that activity was higher in the part of the brain near the antennas of a cellular phone. These are still preliminary findings and do not yet indicate there is a, is a significant detrimental effect, but it is concerning concerning how often we are exposed to this type of radiation. For those who spend hours per day talking on cell phones, it's only smart, and not to, not to mention convenient, to use a headset to reduce this radiation. Even a Bluetooth headset should help because the intensity of radiation emitted by a Bluetooth device will be far less than those emitted by a cellular phone. We recommend you check out cat5.tv slash jawbone, the ultimate Bluetooth headset. Among the most popular and well-known game, game franchises of all time, somewhere up there with Mario Brothers, is the venerable Legend of Zelda series. Last Monday marked the 25th birthday of the original game, which was released on February 21, 1986, for the Famicom system in Japan. Eighteen months later, it made its way to North America on the N Nintendo Entertainment System. The Legend of Zelda game marked a big step, big step for console gaming as it was released as the first ever game to use a cartridge which allowed games to be saved. Post your Zelda memories by commenting on this news story at newsroom.category5.tv. And for our final story tonight, Professor Sarah Seeger is part of the team working with information generated by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, and she hopes to prove we are not alone in the universe. Her team recently discovered a fresh batch of 1,235 possible exoplanets, the celestial bodies orbiting far-off stars. During a recent expedition in Waterloo, Ontario, Sarah said for thousands of years people have wondered if there's life beyond Earth. We're the first generation with the technical capability to show that there is. Potentially, we'll be the society that discovers the first extrasolar life, and in 1,000 years, people will remember our era as the starting point of the interstellar journey they've embarked on. She says, I'm in this to find life, but the life I'll find won't be aliens. If Sarah's team finds that life exists in some form on another world, it doesn't mean we'll be high-fiving Vulcans anytime soon. Traveling in the kind of ship we now send to Mars, a traveler would need 500,000 years to reach the nearest star. Even in the kind of souped-up craft that exists in the wildest dreams of the most optimistic engineers, traveling at one-tenth the speed of life would still take 43 years to get to the nearest star, plus another 43 years for the return trip. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks, Beck. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and this episode is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, which you'll find at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug, and Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Tonight we're taking a look at uh, restoring a busted up computer using Clonezilla. This free software is uh, what allows us to create a clone of our computer and then, uh, should the worst happen, be able to restore it back to our computer. Last That's the time approach I just that we're taking. Clonezilla disk. This time I dropped the computer, so. There you go. <laughs> So we, uh, well, that's the approach that we're taking. Of course, there's lots more to Clonezilla, which you'll find out a little bit more about uh, on episode number 179 of Category 5. Tonight, though, we are strictly looking at uh, what happens if our computer itself is, uh, is not functional and we need to bring it back. So let's, uh, let's bring up this machine here. There we go. 
There. Okay. So this is the computer right. we were working on last week, as you can see. There's our There's file. our test from episode number 179 with the body hello there. What we're going to do is we're going to destroy that file. Just like that, just a quick delete. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yeah. Let's uh, let's break some stuff. Cuz cuz you know, it's it happens. <laughs> Hop on over to our C drive. Go into I don't know, Windows slash system 32. Let's just say that we're destroying our computer here and the computer is destroyed. So the hard drive is crashed. Uh, something has corrupted our hard drive, something along those lines, right? Who knows? Could be any one of a number of things. But this computer, regardless, is, is pretty much fried after this kind of stuff happens. Whatever it takes. We could d corrupt the registry, whatever, right? Yeah, you can do all kinds of so I'm just wreaking havoc on the system, just deleting random files, and just just for the sake of a demonstration here, don't ever do this at home. <laughs> yes. Right? Professional driver on a closed course. <laughs> don't do this. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. All right. Results may vary. <laughs> but the point is, is that here we are. You know, so we're going to start off with a completely destroyed system, something where we can't even potentially boot that computer system. And we want to be able to uh, we want to be able to restore that to a working uh, working format. I don't know if you can do this or not. Oh, I tried. Okay, let's try rebooting and see if this computer is going to come up for us. Well, you could have gone into RegEdit and played around. I could have. That, that can always. That do, would be that, really that, fast. That can be fun. Yeah. yeah. These are the things that you'd never want to do to your computer. But we're just going to demonstrate how we're able to actually restore and fix a computer that is completely dead. I'm going to hard boot this computer because it's probably at this point it's probably dying. You going to put it out of its misery? Just give it a quick hard boot. Let's see if. It's able to boot. <coughs> a little punt. Hmm. Sorry, that was kick. A, yeah. Is that was that the, that, that the pun? A, yeah, football. The, thing. Oh, okay. I see. And it still boots. Look at that. You try to destroy Windows and it still boots. No, no, almost. No. We haven't gotten. Oh, oh, oh! It went a little weird there. So let's uh, let's change our desktop wallpaper just so that it's obvious that something has gone on here, uh, and that what we've done is successful. I still think RegEdit would be fun. Yep. Sure. Let's see if you can delete a whole tree. That would be scary. Don't ever try this stuff at home. Oh, can't yeah. delete something. But anyway, oh. so what we've done, I've, remo I've removed that file off of my desktop. I'm going to empty my recycle bin, which it doesn't allow me to do anymore because I've probably broken my recycle bin. That's interesting. <laughs> I'll remove QuickBooks from the desktop. I've changed the uh, desktop icon. And now, let's restart our computer. So let's pretend now that, uh, that that computer is, it's crashed. The computer's crashed. Let's say we put a new hard drive in and we're ready to actually give this thing a restore from that image that we created last week. So if you're curious about how we get this image, check out episode number 179 of Category 5 TV. Uh, in which we actually show you how to create an image that we're going to be able to restore on our computer should the hard drive fail or something along those lines. So tonight we're doing the exact opposite. We're pulling a 180 here on episode you 180. You saved the image on your Samba server somewhere. Yes. yes. Yes, it's on the server. So I'm actually doing this through the network. That said, I saved it through the server, but I could put it on an external hard drive. I could put it on a flash drive if I've got one that's big enough for it. Uh, and I can take that directly to my computer and I could restore it directly from an external hard drive, say. Right? So is the file pretty much the same size as whatever you had on your original hard drive? Well, it should be quite substantially smaller because of the, you no, know, it'll take up about um, the amount of space as the data, but it's not, it's not going to record empty sectors. Okay. So if it's a 20 gig hard drive, it might end up being only an 8 gig file backup because it's leaving out those empty sectors. There's no point in backing those up, I guess it assumes. So, again, so we're going to choose our language as just default. Sorry, what's that? So if you're doing this and to CD, you'd have a stack of them. 
you would never do it to CD. <laughs> no, CDs are 700 megs or something like that, right? So, yeah. again, I'm kind of skipping through this stuff because we went over it last week. We're going to start Clonezilla. Um, do watch episode number 179 to catch all this stuff. We're going to go device to image again, um, not device to device. And we're actually, even though it says device to image, we're actually going image to device. So now we're going to go back to our Samba server, or like I said, you could use a local device if you want to throw it onto a hard drive or whatever and plug it into USB. Here I am going to go Samba server because I've actually got this on my DHCP server. I know the IP address as per episode number 179. The domain is empty, the administrator login, and my directory is clonezilla, or the, the share, I should say. So it's going to ask me for my password. And now we'll see if that was successful. 10.0.0.5 slash clonezilla is mounted to slash home slash part imig. All right, so we can uh, continue on with that just by pressing enter as it says on the screen. Go into beginner mode. And now this is where things get different from episode number 179. You'll see last week we did save local disk as an image. This week we're going to instead go restored, uh, restore disk, which is restore an image to a local disk. So let's click on that. And now it's actually connected into that Samba share and it says, hey, here's one from the 22nd of February. It's called QuickBooks. Okay. It took about 30, only about 30 minutes to create that. Yeah, I know we quick. didn't, uh, just after the show is when it, uh, when it finished off. Okay, so now the target disk. This is asking me where I want to put it and that is my internal hard drive, the only one that I have in there. So you would just select your hard drive and then it's telling you a little bit of information. You can hit enter to continue and keep in mind that whatever we're about to do is going to overwrite sector by sector that hard drive. So every bit of data on your hard drive that you have selected is going to be 100% lost. Chances are pretty good you're never going to be able to get it back if you select the wrong hard drive. So be very careful. If you have USB hard drives plugged in and stuff, always wise when you're doing this kind of thing, unplug those external hard drives so you don't accidentally plug in, uh, connect to the, like tell it to restore to the wrong drive. Other things are like your, your camera cards. If those are in the drive, they may be detected as a, as a hard drive. So make sure you eject any of those kinds of things before you go through this type of process. Because as it says on the screen, warning, warning, warning. The existing data in the hard disk slash partitions will be overwritten. All existing data will be lost. All right, so we're going to authorize that. I know that this is the correct thing to do. Are you sure you want to continue? I'm going to say yes. Let me ask you again. <laughs> it's being redundant because it's warning you here, and I'm warning you. You're going to lose everything that's on that hard drive, but in this case, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to get rid of that broken Windows and restore it from this backup that we have. Okay, let's do it. So let's do it. Let's so this could be, you know, your hard drive has crashed and fortunately you were, you were smart and you created a Clonezilla backup copy, an image of your computer uh, two weeks ago, right? Yeah. And you've got it there. Like I said, it only took 30 minutes. So what's, what's keeping you from doing this kind of thing? This is something you really want to do. You've just got your computer set up exactly the way you like it and before yep. your kids start mucking around with it and before anything else starts happening anything to it, at all. create an image and set it aside somewhere. Or Keep it on your yep. network. And again, it, it works with basically any uh, file system. So that means that if you've got... We can do this with our Mac? I, I believe so. It supports HFS and HFS Plus. Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. Check the website. Uh, you can pull it up there, clonezilla.org. Um, I simply can't because I've got this up on my screen. But So you can see that this is actually very, very quick to restore. It says here that it's going to take about 14 minutes to... Uh, to run through the restoration process. And remember, this is through my network. So you could have this on an external drive. So file systems here, you see FAT NTFS HFS Plus. Sure. So the Mac, Mac OS, OS okay. is supported as well. So if you've got a dual boot system or you've got Linux installed uh, or you've got Windows installed or whatever you have on your system, because it's a clone of the hard drive sector by sector, you're actually backing up everything, including the boot, part, uh, the boot table, everything, uh, the bootloader. So let's say you're dual booting, 
A Windows backup solution would only back up Windows. A Linux backup solution, if correctly configured, could back up both, but a little bit yeah. trickier to do. This takes that entire hard drive, throws it together into an image as per episode number 179, and now in a case where our hard drive is crashed, we've got no access to that, uh, to that computer, we've, let's say, installed a brand new hard drive, and now uh, on that hard drive, we're able to restore that computer back to the way it was when we first uh, backed up to an image using CloneZilla. So fantastic piece of software, clonezilla.org. Uh, this is going to take a few minutes to run, so we'll let that go. And in the meantime, we got some stuff to give away, I do believe. Yes, we do. But hey, you know what? Um, super cool, Nick, who used to be guest in some hey numeric ordinal, uh, said, Robbie F. Hey. Found the show over the weekend. Great job. I am excited to go through the backlog now. Wow. Yes, but do it on your Wi-Fi if you're using your mobile device. We went through that a little bit earlier. <laughs> smart, smart advice. Hey, look, super cool, Nick. We've got a couple of these pogo plugs to give away. Literally, we've got two of these to give away tonight. And all you have to do is be in the chat room. Drawbot is going to check things out right now. Category5.tv, that's uh, our irc.freenode.net uh, chat room is Category5. The pogo plug basically is a cloud computing device for storage that allows you to share your hard drive with friends and family. It's an ex it takes external USB hard drives. And they can access it from anywhere, from any device, be it their iPhone or, or Android device or whatever it is. You don't have to be that altruistic. You can share it with yourself. You can share it with yourself. <laughs> I'm at you work can set and one I'm of these. stuff. Absolutely. But you could set this up at a friend or family member's house and hook up your drive and use it for an external uh, or an off-site backup. That is a fantastic idea for redundancy and keeping your data safe. We talk a lot about yeah. you know, things like CloneZilla where we need to have a backup of our hardware or of our software, our files. This is another way we can do that is to have a redundant copy on a pogo plug device uh, somewhere out there. Is this open to anybody in the chat room anywhere in the world or do you have to be yeah, in right. Canada? So we'll send it to the United Kingdom. We'll send it to... Anywhere in the world. Here we go. There it is, the pogo plug. Pro, Drawbot is doing its thing. Lots of names in the chat room. These are the people who are joining us right there in the chat room at Category5.tv. See some familiar faces. Nice to have you here. Good luck, everybody. We're giving away two Pogo Plug Pros. And there we go, our winners tonight. Blackheim and Invincible Mutant. Congratulations. Uh, we will uh, be happy to send you a Pogo Plug Pro. There that you go. That is wild, you know, because Invincible Mutant just says, will you send this anywhere in the world? Oh, yeah, that was... Will you send that was anywhere? Anywhere? <laughs> now, what I need you to do... Now, we gave away a couple of these in January, and there's one of the uh, winners that I still haven't uh, gotten their information ah. from. So I want to be very clear, and, and for, if that's you, if you haven't received your pogo plug from Jan January's draw, uh, make sure you get in touch with me. I've tried emailing and things and, and can't get a hold of you. Um, you need to pop me an email live at category5.tv with your phone number and your shipping address as well as your real name uh, and how you appear in the uh, in the chat room. That's going to get us started so that we can ship that out to you um, and I need that at live at category5.tv but in addition to that um, just because you know you're, you're in the chat room uh, we need you also to have watched the episode um, so I need you to include in the body of that email the number 5142 which is basically just a, a pin Oh. to let us know that you actually heard this award. And don't you go telling them that in the chat room, everybody. <laughs> All right? Because we don't want to give away prizes to, uh, to people that are just kind of hovering in the chat room. No. So you've got two weeks to send us that in, and uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to send you off a pogo plug. Fantastic. Congratulations again to, to Blackheim and Invincible Mutant. Okay. So our software uh, is restoring back to, uh, to that computer fairly quickly. Except for the bandwidth, I suppose you could use your uh, Pogo Plug as a CloneZilla device. You could uh, well, store the bandwidth, your image. It's, it's all relative to whether you're on the internal LAN or on the external network. No, but if I, you're yeah. doing it through the internet. Yeah. But yeah, you could. Sure. Mm -hmm. You can mount a Pogo Plug <clears throat> through uh, the software 
that it allows you to install. I don't know if you've done this on your system. On my Windows system, it shows up as my P drive. So any device, any hard drive that's I plugged into my that. no, okay, it's free software Please that you can just like when you log in. Sure, you can use the web interface. It's fantastic, mm -hmm. but with the software that they give you that they provide as well. Um, you can use it like a hard drive, and that's fantastic for backups. Because on my Windows system, for example, I can tell my backups just to go to the P drive. It's my ah, Pogo plug, right? Perfect. And then that Pogo plug, which is here, can be set up with what's called Active Sync to another Pogo plug that's at a family member's house. And so then it's copying through my LAN at gigabit speeds uh, from my Windows computer or my Linux computer or my Mac or whatever device it is, even from my iPod Touch, from your uh, BlackBerry, your Android device. Um, it saves that through the LAN, and then with Active Sync, it's going to then say, "Oh, look, there's some new files on this backup. I'm going to sync it to through the DSL or through the cable internet to the other device that's outside of your network." So now you've got this amazing redundancy going on, and it's all f with this incredible device from PogoPlug. Well, yeah, sounds good. Oh, it's fantastic. What do you got going on? Oh, we got a lot of. Congratulatory messages going mm. out to Blackheim and uh, Invincible Mutant. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, uh, I should mention that we do have more chances for you to win a pogo plug uh, coming up. And uh, as we're on the topic of contests, this is your final week to qualify uh, to win that uh, copy of Wirecast 4. That's the software that we use here. And that's what gives us this chroma key ability to create these amazing studio sets using uh, digital technology. In all of reality, we're just sitting in the regular studio. Oh, come on, don't tell them that. It's a secret. Yeah. But from the viewer perspective, Wirecast 4 gives you this incredible ability to I do my live. green t-shirt. I was going to. I told you to wear it. <laughs> it. This is a live chroma key, which if, you, if you've ever done any amount of broadcasting, you know that that's spectacular. Live chroma key. A lot of software boasts that it has chroma key, but when it's live and it's this good, I'm very impressed. It's very impressive. So we're giving away a free copy of Wirecast 4. That has a $450 value, and we would love to uh, have you participate in that contest. This week is our final chance to take qualifiers. So get onto our website, category5.tv. If you think that you'd ever want to do some broadcasting or live video production, if you uh, have a church or a business that would love to do live streaming on the internet, um, this is a fantastic piece of software that lets you do so much, um, as well as live recording to your hard drive as well. You know, you probably shouldn't let them in on the secret because, you know, we could ask for donations to pay for this new 2,000 square foot studio. <laughs> There you go. Well, it, it, we can actually step it up. See the green down at the bottom there? That can be a screen. Ah. So we can, with $2,000, upgrade our computer system to give us that amount of power. We don't have that much power oh. yet. Uh, with the, uh, We've got a very, like a quad 6600 uh, Intel chip. So we need to step that up big time if we want to get into that. Maybe i7 or something. Um, all right. So all that said, stepping back to Wirecast giveaway, uh, get onto our website, category5.tv, and from there, make sure you're logged in. So you have to be a registered viewer. It's free. Uh, we will not spam you, and we will uh, keep your information s uh, safe and private as well. Uh, but get onto there, be registered, be logged in, and then go to support us, and uh, you'll see uh, one of the options there is uh, information about advertising on Category 5 TV. Somewhere hidden on that page is information on how you can win Wirecast 4. So just follow the steps, and uh, we, we will look forward to taking your qualification. Next week, we will be announcing uh, who's going to actually be a part of the voting process. We're going to be picking the top three uh, that have entered for the contest, and then the viewers are going to have a chance to vote uh, for who is the, uh, the actual winner of the software. Oh. All right, Greg in Texas, make sure you get your ballot in. And that information, as I said, will be found right on our website, category5.tv. Just wanting to win doesn't do it. You've no. Gotta get in there and enter. You gotta enter. Cheers. Hey, Invincible Mutant. You're very welcome. <laughs> Try to have little perks for you for watching the show, of course. Nice right. to have everybody here. Um, and the, the giveaway. I'm watching this show. I'm here, and I was almost on time, and you didn't even make me coffee tonight, Robbie. Sorry, dude. Yeah. I had to build this studio. 
Hokey doodle. Oh, it was a last minute thing. Screwdriver. Well, because what happened is John called in oh. this afternoon and said, I can't make it today. Well, okay. First thing through my mind, here's an opportunity for us to green He's screen. He's in celebrity rehab too, right? No. No, no, not as Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but with John away, it gives us a chance to use the green screen. So okay. that was pretty rushed. And, and so, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't have time to make you a coffee. Well, it's been suggested in the chat room that I just quit. No coffee? Just <clears throat> That's fine. Well, if I'm just quit. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, dear me. Okay, we've got two minutes remaining. I hope that this is going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to make we're it. We're at 83%. Look at that, eh? That's pretty... It's like we timed it or something. Because we don't want to lose that little notepad document that we had there. That's a very important document. Hello there. It's not about the document. Oh. It's about all the files that are on that hard drive. And Everything. I did mention all, all your home pictures. pictures. Yeah, okay, good. All your home pictures. Everything's digital these days, right? What happens if it's on your laptop and then your laptop gets drenched? Big problem. You know what that is? Unfortunate. For my sensitivity is a... <laughs> for those who have had that happen, I'm sorry for Eric's... Uh... <laughs> Lack of sen The sensitivity training didn't stick. <laughs> didn't go well. Our, uh, yeah, we need to really step that up, I think. Yeah. Speaking of getting wet, I, I don't really want anybody to analyze my dreams, but I was having this terrible dream last night. I was in a canoe. The thing capsized. This was your dream? <laughs> but you had your ringer wraps in your dream? On the front seat of my car, but the Blackberry got drowned. And my ringer wraps were in the car. And I was thinking, Eric, What a dream. Yeah, no, but that's absolutely true. <laughs> Oh, deliciously random. I was. So the moral of your dream is keep your ringer wraps. Use your ringer on your, wraps on your if phone. you're going canoeing. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> We've got, look at this. This is fantastic. 30 seconds left to restoring this. And if you're just tuning in, we're actually recovering a failed hard drive here using Clonezilla, which is free software available for download from clonezilla.org. It does so much for us, but generally speaking, or just to summarize it, it is a, uh, a cloning software that allows you to make image copies of your hard drive using free software. So no having to go out and buy uh, big commercial applications to do this. What are you snickering about? Well, I was thinking we were covering for some other stuff, too. But <laughs> okay. Now it's called Nightmare. Three seconds left. All right. It says 100%. But it says it's done. Part clone successfully restored the image to the device. Finishing the unicast. Restoring your image. Good to go. Press enter. Okay, what do you want to do? I want to reboot. We'll reboot in five, four, three, two, one. And then it lies because it says, oh, by the way, <laughs> I told you you were rebooting, but you need to push enter to eject your CD. So now I'll do that, and now we'll restart. There it goes. All right. Okay, so. Drum roll, please. Here we go. Okay, we're booting up this system. Here it goes. Here it goes. Welcome. What wallpaper do we have? We do not have the... Oh, there's our document. Everything is back to the way it was before our hard drive crashed. And that is exactly what we want. And before the show is over, too. It's available as a free download, clonezilla.org. Check it out. And it's been fantastic having you here with us. We'll see you next Tuesday night, same time, 7 o'clock. Do check out our mobile app, mobile.cat5.tv. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good week. Take care. Well, Rob. Hey.